everyone, it's Kelsey from the blog Westman Academy and today I'm going to be showing you how you can transform any of your old rocking chairs or regular chairs with a slip cover. So my mom actually purchased this rocking chair from Walmart for my husband and I when we became foster parents in 2017. So this chair has gotten a lot of use. It has gone through three kids. I'm about to give birth to my fourth kid and I thought this would be a great time to revamp it in a very easy and simple way. I wanted to show you how to do that so that even if you are a beginner sewer, you would be able to transform your rocking chair as well. I'm going to be using drop cloths that I purchased from Amazon. I did bleach this in the bathtub, but you don't have to unless you want more of a white slip cover. I find that drop cloth is just a really great material overall for protecting furniture. It's thicker, it's easy to work with, easy to sew, and it just creates a beautiful texture and look to the chair. I'm also working on doing slip covers for two of my wing back chairs. And so hopefully I have a tutorial for that eventually. But I wanted to just give you quick details about what I'm going to be doing to this chair so that as you follow along with my tutorial, as well as with the steps on my blog post on westmanacademyhomeschool.com, you know kind of where I'm going and what direction um, my mind is taking you because it is a lot easier to do this subcover than it might look. And even though this video might seem like it is long, I just wanted to give you a thorough description so that you would be able to follow it step by step. To actually use the cushions that are already on this chair, I want to utilize them because there's nothing wrong with them. They do have some stains on them and a negative downfall of the cushions in themselves are that they don't unzip. So I can't unzip this, I can't wash it. I can wash it with the pad inside, but what I'm going to do is because the pillow itself has gotten flat throughout the years, I'm going to actually add a padding around this. So what I'm going to do essentially is use this like a pillow and I'm going to create a pillowcase for each of the cushions. Now the little footrest that I'm sitting on currently is going to be a little bit different, but my plan is to cut out a piece of drop cloth in this shape. And then on the back side, I'm going to do what I did for my DIY bassinet pad cover. Um, if you haven't watched that video, I will have it linked as well. But essentially with the bassinet pad, I created a opening in the back, like a pillowcase so that the pad can easily slip in and out. That is what I'm going to be doing with this pad as well. So I'm going to be cutting out two pieces that overlap each other for the back and I'm going to sew around the sides, hem the opening flaps so that they look nice and that way I can remove this pillow. I'm also going to be doing kind of a similar thing to the bottom pad as well. Again, it's gone flat so what I'm going to be doing is taking some extra fluff and cushion that I have purchased from Walmart a while ago. The whole bundle itself was $15 and I'm just going to add that on top and on bottom. On the bottom, on the top, we'll see how it goes inside the drop cloth pillowcase or covering, slip cover as you will. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I just wanted to give you my thought process. That way you know where I am headed in this video and you aren't confused. Please stick with it. I know that you can do it. It's going to be a lot easier and simple and more simple than it seems. And let's just jump right into it. If you want step-by-step -step instructions, please visit my blog post. I will have it posted down below or at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. I'm going to be cutting the drop cloth in the shape of the cushion. Again, use your initial cushion. Utilize it so that you don't have to start from scratch. I am going to be cutting it a little bit bigger. That way my pieces are able to flop over so that when I sew, I have a lot of room to work with. I'm also going to utilize the seam that already came with the drop cloth. It's already hemmed. And so this is going to be one of the pieces that in the back that um, kind of folds over top of each other so that it looks very nice. So 
So I just cut out the back piece because this is a really nice hem. It's actually going to be the top back piece cover. I'm going to be using this side piece. It is hemmed, but it's not as nice of a hem. So it's actually going to be the piece that's underneath. So it's a little bit more hidden, but I still need a nice hem. That way the material doesn't unravel. So I've laid the top back piece and the cushion over top. This is about how far I will have it overlap. And so I just need to see around how, about how much I need to cut downward so that this part can then be sewed to the bottom of the front piece. So now I have the front part of my back piece using the semi nice hem. I'm going to just layer that underneath. And what I'm going to end up doing is just sewing the side seams together, but this part will remain open so that I can remove the cushion and any padding that I need to. So I just have this polyester padding. I bought this from Walmart and what I'm going to do is make several layers until I like the puffiness of the cushion. I'm going to cut it in the shape of the cushion and then I'm going to place my pieces on, pin around them and then sew. So currently the polyester is folded in half so there are two pieces. I have two pieces currently cut and I'm just going to use the shape of these to cut around for more cushion. That way it's puffier, a little bit more comfortable and I can always add more because this roll did give me plenty to work with. So I finished cutting out the polyester fluffing that is just going to sit on top of my cushion that already came with the chair. If you have a cushion that unzips, that is fantastic. You can always add this inside or you could just do kind of the free fluff um, pillow stuffing and just stuff your cushion thicker. You can totally skip this step if your cushion is the perfect fluffiness and it's not needed any extra cushion, but because my pillow has just been used since 2017. It has deflated a ton and so I wanted to bring some more life into it. I'm going to have this nice new cushion on top so this will actually be the front of what I'm leaning against. So that's, this is part of the reason that the slip cover is so helpful and important is because I can easily take this part off to be washed and then I can just leave these as is and if you get spit up on it or <laughs> spill juice or any anything you can always remove it and wash it super easily so I've pinned my front piece with my larger back piece I pinned it tightly to the cushions to ensure that what my cushion will be like that is how tightly my slip cover will be sewn after I have um, created a straight stitch all along from the top to the side. I'm going to cut the excess and I'm not going to flip it inside out right away. You want to make sure that when you are, are pinning you have your good sides facing each other. So the front piece really doesn't matter especially if you're using drop cloth because there's not a better front or back side but if you are using a material that has a back and a front specifically, you want to make sure that the front nice looking pieces are touching, touching or facing each other. So because this is hemmed on the back, I wanted the nicer part of the hem to show or be seen, I guess, on the back side. So this would be the underneath part would be my better side. So I'm going to be sewing my better sides together so that when you flip it inside out, the good sides are showing. It's something that can be easily missed and it really will just throw everything off if you don't do that. So after I have finished sewing 
along the side and the top. I'm going to place the cushion back in and pin this other side. I am not pinning this other side currently because I don't think I can get the cushion out. If this piece is already sewn, I can easily get the cushion out because I'm not afraid that I will break the seams or um, pop the, the pins out if I tried um, to pull it out now, if that makes sense. The pins are a little bit more fragile and in place, so I want to make sure that I have that part sewn first before trying to pull a cushion out of something that I just took a lot of time to pin. You can of course try to sew around the cushion with the cushion still in, but I have found that it's a little bit too bulky, so it's easier if I just remove the cushion and reinsert it to pin the other side. So I placed the cushion and the padding back on and I have secured it with a pin. I'm going to remove the cushion and finish sewing, oh, finish sewing the rest of this side. Then I'm going to place this piece on with the hem towards the top. Again, with this piece of fabric, it doesn't matter which side is on the top and the bottom, but if you have a side you want to be showing, you wanna make sure it's facing down, the good side down. So I'm going to overlap that then and pin the sides on both sides and the bottom and sew around it to finish off the top part. I did already cut out the padding and the fabric pieces I needed for the bottom seat piece. And so I'm going to be following the same steps of putting on the front cover, sewing around the edges, this is going to open up the exact same as the top back cushion where it opens up so the cushion can be removed. So I pinned on from both sides this bottom piece and now I'm going to sew around it. I did leave the cushion in here just so that I could show you that it can be done but it is a little bit harder. I had to have my husband hold up this end so that this part would be flat. So once I have this all sewn, then we can flip the slip cover inside out and place it back on our cushion and this part will be done. Now I will say that it is taking me a couple hours. I do have children and so this video will show kind of a longer process for me not, you know, being in the same clothes and have the same hair and makeup because it is a multiple day situation for me currently with children.
Now moving on to the ottoman, I am just cutting off the top piece. You wanna cut it as long as you want it to be and where you want your ruffle to meet. If you hear little newborn noises, my son Judah was born February 21st, so he is going to be with me as I create the voiceover for the rest of this video. I created little folds on the ends of my top piece and this is just to tighten the piece I'm going to be sewing that the folds now. I did sew them a little bit long, so if you don't want it to be as dramatic of a tight seam as what was shown in the videos or pictures you've seen, you can definitely make it shorter or skip that step altogether. After that, I created my ruffle piece and I just cut fabric as long as I wanted and I recommend wrapping it around your ottoman twice so mine ended up being too short so learn from me wrap it around your ottoman twice if it's if it's too long you can always cut off the excess or um, create tighter ruffles I changed the setting to my machine the tension to nine and my stitch length to five that is the longest and the highest that it, my machine goes so double check for your machine it creates the ruffle for you and then what I'm going to do is wrap this around and move my, rus my ruffles according to um, the size of the ottoman. As you can see, mine was way too short so I didn't have to bunch the ruffles very much and I actually had to add a, s a second piece, um, but definitely make yours long enough. Wrap it around twice, like I said before. I just pinned the bottom piece of the top cover and then the top the bottom ruffle if that makes sense I pinched them together make sure that your fabric is inside out that way when you flip it over the good side of your fabric is showing then I just created a straight stitch I moved my tension and my stitch length back to normal created my straight stitch all the way around and turned my cover over so that is how I made this super easy DIY rocking chair slip cover if you would like more in-depth, step-by-step instructions on how I created these slipcovers, you can go to the blog post at westmanacademyhomeschool.com.